Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, have you heard of Virtual PBX? No, what is that like? Virtual peanut butter and jelly? Virtual PBX provides affordable business phone plans for entrepreneurs that need a way to connect to their customers. Never give out a personal number again. They offer business telephone numbers, called forwarding, professional greetings, and so much more. Isn't that the phone you have in your office? That's correct. I have a Virtual PBX Yalink, the T21P E2. But it is the same phone that you will see on the NBC show, The Office. So when you see Dwight and Jim slamming down the phone, I have that same exact phone. Nice. Do you have a stapler and jello? It's the most important aspect of an office, making sure you have a good telephone. Yeah. And I think you can say 15% off when you sign up, right? That's correct. If you go to virtualpbx.com forward slash podcast, again, that's forward slash podcast. You can save up to 15% and you can enjoy their new flex plans starting as low as $13 per month. Well, that sounds awesome. Yes. Are you looking to start a new business or have to have professional greetings, call forwarding, texting, voicemail, virtual receptionist? If you're looking for any of those items, don't go anyplace out at Virtual PBX. That sounds cool. I, I kind of want a sandwich right now. Mike wants a sandwich and you deserve a better IP phone solution. Visit Virtual PBX. Visit them at virtualpbx.com forward slash podcast. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Oh, dude, you have to listen to this. Funniest podcast opening I've ever listened to. Here, listen to this. My friend Dan, he's got a podcast, cause all comics need a podcast, and nobody had a podcast called The Art of Bombing, so Dan went out and bought a tape deck, who knows why he bought a tape deck, now cats don't get played on tape decks, but Dan is from the 80s, so hey there all you funny jerks, come talk to Dan about your work, tell him all about your worst times, it's The Art of Bombing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Have you ever wondered what goes through a comedian minds when they tell a joke that doesn't work? No, I've experienced that. You've experienced it directly? Yeah, I actually tried stand up once, so I know what it feels like to bomb a joke. Whether you're an inspiring comedian or hardcore comedy nerd, what's that must have been you, Mike? The Art of Bombing podcast has something for everyone. From useful comedy insights to entertaining stories of bombing and failure told by the comedians that live through them, like Louis Anderson, Andy Erickson, Chad Daniels, Dusty Slay, and more. Join comedian Dan Bublitz Jr. as he sits down with comedians to discuss what can be learned from these ugly shows on the road. New episodes are available every Tuesday wherever you get your podcasts. For more information, visit them on the web at www.artofbombingpod.com. Again, that's www.artofbombingpod.com. That's fantastic. Coming to you from the shores of the Pacific Northwest, keeping you up to date on technology, while enjoying a little whiskey on the side with leading edge topics along with special guests to navigate technology in a segmented stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm, pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Mm. Yes, a little bit of our whiskey. All right, we we t- we tasted it a little bit ahead of time. But don't. Well, why are you? Why are you? Why are you? Well, I'm just saying. It was why are you admitting mm, the things mm. you're not supposed to oh, admit? Okay, to. That, okay, that's right. <laughs> Welcome to Tech Time Radio. I'm your host Nathan Mum. We got Mike Roday here and David Brown behind the board. We are a live radio two-hour show for technology in the Pacific Northwest. We run from four to six p.m. on Saturday. So if you're watching this on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, except for during four to six. You're watching a rebroadcast. So to stay up with all the information. Thanks for letting us know that. That's right. I did it last week and this week too. That's right. Uh, To stay up to date, you can go to www.techtimeradio.com and you can watch episodes, the blog posts. So if you like a story that we talk about, most of the time we don't have time to deep dive into it, but I will post blog information on there and a chance for you to sign up for our newsletter. Go to techtimeradio.com, sign up for our newsletter, and we will have a monthly newsletter written by Mike, myself, some of our producers. It's going to be fantastic. I can't wait for episode one of that. That's hey, going to be pretty interesting. Awesome. Huh? Yeah, that is awesome, isn't it? All right. So welcome to the show. How can you stay connected to the show? You can go to twitch.tv forward slash tech time radio and you can 
live stream chat with us, or you can also go to Twitter and do hashtag Tech Time Radio and put in an informational quote or tidbit, and we will read that on the air. On our first hour of the show, we are slammed with lots of information. We have top stories in the first five minutes. We're talking about cryptocurrency. We have Elon Musk on the radio to explain to us what cryptocurrency is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe through a, a maybe, 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 maybe through a video pod, but but it does. Is he still does on anything, the radio? Does it have anything to do with SNL? It does. It's going to okay. be a skit. So we're going to be talking about that. Uh, we have an update on why Tesla dropped Bitcoin as an option to purchase cars. We have a new app just released for the Nintendo Switch. We are so excited about. Um, and we have attorneys stepping in for children's social media to stop an effort against Facebook. Oy. We got great new items to talk about in our gadgets and gear with Gwen Way. Our producer will be joining us on our second segment. And for the first time on the show ever, we're going to be doing a roundtable discussion in our third segment. And we're going to be talking specifically regarding uh, Joe Biden's cybersecurity executive order put into place Wednesday, May 13th. So we got a bunch of outlines. We are excited to have Nick Espinosa will be joining us. Gwen Way, we got Mike Gorday, and I'll be kind of the moderator, and I've been watching plenty of these uh, shows to, to see what the moderator's supposed to do and how they probe questions. So I, I, I DVR'd tons of these type of deals, and I got this ready, so I think I got it under control. Okay. All right. I know there's a joke there somewhere. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just, I just saying that I, I got that. I, I've been working on that. So Mike's mesmerizing moment presented by Story Coffee we have, along with our NFT and our whiskey tasting. That's at only hour one. In our second hour, we have letter segment back which is starting to become one of the fans' favorites. Uh, we have our featured world interview exclusive with Mark Kaplan that will mm -hmm. be talking about Checkmark, a new application social media platform. And he's coming out with a completely different mindset of how social media can interact with people. And we're going to be talking about him personally. Uh, he used to work at Deloitte, so I'll go through his accommodation. He's pretty big. Pretty big celebrity to have on our show, but he's going to be talking about his new application called Checkmark. And then we are kind of continuing our expose, and we're going to be talking about some items about Jeff Bezos on a new uh, segment that we're actually calling Stories You Didn't Know. Okay. Look at that. Yeah. All right. Okay. About that. Okay. If you need any information, go to techtimeradio.com, and you can get all of your information there. Soon, we have some gear. We have some T-shirts being made up. We got one specifically with Mike's uh, quote where he says, Hooked on Phonics worked for you, and it's a little Hooked on Phonics logo with uh, <laughs> Tech Time Radio. So there's going to be some funny uh, stuff aren't, available for Didn't you for say they were all my quotes or something? Yeah, so so yeah, far we're going almost <laughs> all just, the quotes that you've talked about, we got shirts being quotes? made. Okay. All right, well, welcome to two hours of entertainment, technology, and, of course, information that will make you go, mm. As and we start risky. each of our segment... Mike, we're yeah. doing our loaded question of the day. Awesome. What is a great thing to have in a hangout room? Oh, a hangout room. That's right. Well, we could go with the standard liquor and video games, but... That's kind of important. Th that's important. Okay. Uh, Legos. Legos. Okay, explain that to me. Legos would be in your hangout room? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I, I, If I were ever to be a billionaire like Jeff Bezos, I wouldn't spend... Money on a yacht. I would spend money on a. On <laughs> now you a just room gave away a matter story that's coming up. Okay, so, okay, they're right. All right, yeah. I would spend money on a room full, just packed full of Legos, and oh, invite okay. people over and sit around doing Lego parties and stuff. Oh, did you watch that Lego uh, competition when um, it was on Fox? And it was... no, I don't like watching people play with Legos. I like <laughs> you like doing it yourself. Okay, <laughs> just, yeah. Star Wars. Is Star Wars your favorite? Lord of the Rings because they got so good at licensing now. What's your favorite? type of set for Legos. I don't have a favorite. Okay. Uh, you like know, we, we, How about Duplos? We, we, are Duplos count no, as Legos? No, those, those are those are baby Legos. We okay, so those don't count and those won't be in your room? That, absolutely not. Okay, all right. Okay, so, all right. now but, we know. You know, everybody had Lego. My, that, was, that was one of the nice things about having kids is that you could buy toys and we blame it on them. Yeah, we have like <laughs> barrels of Legos from when I was a kid, and then my brother had Legos, and then I got passed down to our kids' Legos. Yeah. So, uh, so if you ever want to open up your room, I can contribute at least like four barrels of uh, all right. <laughs> of Legos. Cool. So there you go. All right. Well, we still have, uh, of course, our whiskey tasting that we're going to do at our first break. But now let's get our episode started with our top stories in the first five minutes. What's happening in the world of technology? This is our top stories in the first five minutes. Story number one, Dodge or Dogecoin, however Do you want to. Dogecoin. Dogecoin's <laughs> price 
falls after Musk says Tesla is dropping <laughs> Bitcoin. Everyone always asks me about cryptocurrency, and we have to explain it more times than not to people. Well, but I have a celebrity that I think explains I it think just he explains it really perfectly, well. and we have Elon Musk on audio. All right, cool. So what is Dogecoin? <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's a digital currency. Like, okay, for instance, this is a dollar, right? It's real. Say sort of. Sort of yeah, okay. real. Yeah. So what is Dogecoin? <laughs> <laughs> About as real as that dollar. How come? Are you making any sense of this? Me? Well, I've, I've actually been reading a lot about it, yeah, and uh, I'm trying to diversify my investment portfolio. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is, what is Dogecoin? This is good question. It's a good question. Well, it's the future of currency. It's an unstoppable financial vehicle that's going to take over the world. I, I get that, but uh, what is it, man? <laughs> <laughs> I keep telling you, it's a cryptocurrency you can trade for conventional money. Oh, so it's a hustle. Yeah, it's a hustle. <laughs> Why didn't you say that, man? Close for all everybody. It's a hustle. It's, it's a hustle. hustle. <laughs> That's right. Thanks to Saturday Night Live. That was hilarious. I think I yeah. watched it at least 30 times. That's exactly what cryptocurrency is. Cryptocurrency is an aspect of a currency that doesn't necessarily exist, but is available. People trade it, and you it has can, money. Yes, you can buy something for nothing. Or buy nothing for something. That's there it right. is. You That's can buy nothing for something and keep trading it. And keep trading it. And yeah. if somebody wants to pay you more than what you paid for it originally, then you make a profit. And he lost money on that on that. So skit. let's talk about it. Yeah, so Dot's <laughs> Queen dropped 13% to a low at 37 cents this week. Uh, as need must. to buy some Dogecoin. That's right. So you can buy some. The soon it will be listed on Coinbase, which is the site that I say, yes. if you're going to do anything, Coinbase is that they're soon going to have it listed there. But essentially, Elon Musk said that the cryptocurrency uh, was a hustle. Now, he specifically said that they will no longer be taking Bitcoin for Tesla. Yeah, now this, this was an interesting justification. And this right. was. So the justification is? Uh, it's because it's creating more problems um, with the fossil, with fuels, the fossil and fuels and electricity to mine the things than to, than to actually use the cr currency. That's correct. So essentially he says that I shouldn't be taking cryptocurrency and I should be taking a more greener option. Right. So he's going to be looking to a greener option instead of uh, having people... Bitcoin uses the energy... Uh, equivalent to the country of Argentina within a month. Yeah, so, so exactly. So for you to mine cryptocurrency in the world, that's the same that's, energy as Argentina uses up within yeah, a month we, itself. Like your computer burning up. Yeah, I, I, I have I have a crypto mining machine at my house, and I got to be very careful with it because as you put your video cards in there and you're processing, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter, and then all that suddenly that i9 processor that you have bought high end taking care of melts down on your system board and then your toast. So there you go. All right, number two story. Nintendo Switch has a new ten dollar <laughs> app that just might surprise you. We talked about this too. This is a great production. I can't production. wait for this. I All can't right, wait for so this. here we go. The app was spotted by Eurogamers. It's literally called a special name here. It's called Calculator. Calculator. <laughs> Calculator. And it's been published by Sabac. It's a single player game, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So it rules out any team based calculations to work on this handheld mode. But according to the product page, don't worry, because it looks just like the iPhone's old calculator app. Isn't that awesome? All you have to do is pay $10, and you can turn your Nintendo Switch into a calculator. And you say why, I ask. I have no answer to tell you I, why you'd want to do either. that. I, but I, it, I can't wait. But, but I'm going to buy a Nintendo Switch <laughs> just so I can buy the calculator. Or open up your Windows <laughs> PC and type in C-A-L-C calc, and you can do the no, same no, thing for no, free. No, no. That's not the way we do things that's anymore. We're, we're going to do the Nintendo we're gonna Switch. Go, we're going to go... A, from B to D without going through C. Okay, all right, I got you. Story number three. More than 40 attorney generals urge Facebook to stop plans for Instagram for kids this week. We no, talked about yeah. it two weeks ago, right? Those so were always, attorney generals. Those weren't attorneys. Those were attorney generals. Attorney generals, generals that's correct. There's yeah. actually 44 of them as of when I pulled this last on yeah. Friday, so there could have been a couple more. But 44 attorney generals signed a letter addressing Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg urging him to scrap plans for an Instagram intended for younger users, citing mental health and privacy concerns, and we've talked we've about talked this a about lot. This. Yeah, this is a bad idea. The letter comes less than a month after child safety groups in Congress expressed similar concerns. 
As every parent knows, kids are already online. We want to give them the ability to have control over what their kids are doing. A Facebook spokesman said yeah, on a CNN, CNN, thanks, David, CNN business comment. So that's what they said. During a congressional hearing in March, Zuckerberg was asked about the company's plan to build a version of Instagram for younger users. Mm -hmm. Zuckerberg said the platform is still in early stages of our thinking, but it's clear that we want children at the age 13 and under to have services available like Instagram. That's right. The cigarette companies knew that. A children version of one of its services and its messenger kids messaging app has already been targeting kids ages 6 to 12. So they just want to have. That's why. Yeah. Do you think that you think all that pressure is going to get them to stop? No, they're still going to move yeah, forward with that. So that that's forward. just going to motivate them even more. But hopefully, on our second hour, we can talk with uh, Mark Kaplan about checkmark. Maybe two marks. Can, yeah. Maybe we can put some uh, deals into that. Maybe. So all right. Maybe it can cause some issues. But we're up against time, Mike. We're going to have some whiskey during our break. When we come on back, we're going to be talking about our whiskey itself. And we're going to have our producer and extraordinaire. Thank goodness she's taken over this. Gwen Way will be joining us on the next segment in Gadgets and Gear. it saves you money. It saves me money. So that's my money-saving feature of having the producer do the Gadgets and Gear so oh, that they have to buy them instead of yeah, us. Only I have a secret. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> um, this is a device. That reaches everybody from doomsday preppers to hikers and everyone in between. Yeah, this is a really cool one. It is. My name is Nathan Mum. We got Mike Day and David behind the board. Welcome to Tech Time Radio. We'll see you after the commercial break. Did you know that up to 12 to 15 percent of Americans grind their teeth at night while they sleep? Hmm. Yeah, it's it's called bruxism. I used to work at a sleep lab, and we used to we used to measure that, and it leads to a lot of uh, problems like headaches and destroys your teeth. It wears down the enamel, and it's just very hard on your your mouth. So every once in a while, I'll wake up, my jaw will hurt. Do you think that I'm grinding my teeth at night? Yeah. Well, so how do you go about protecting this then? Uh, the number one recommended way of protecting yourself from teeth grinding is what's called a night guard, which is a custom fitted prosthetic that you put inside your mouth. It usually runs, you know, hundreds of dollars, but I know our sponsor, Smile Brilliant, can get you custom fitted night guards for as little as $45 a piece. So if you go to smilebrilliant.com and use Tech Time Radio at checkout, you can receive 20% off your complete order. So visit smilebrilliant.com and use the Tech Time Radio at checkout code. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Have you heard about 180 Consulting? No. I love these guys. You know how much I avoid working with copy of vendors, right? Uh, actually, I get to hear about it all the time. Not anymore, because guess what? The guys at 180 Consulting took over the entire process. They assessed our needs, worked directly with the vendors on my behalf, and helped us understand our option. No sales fluff, just good information so we can make the right decision. Well, that sounds good. How do they get paid? Their only compensation comes from a small share of the cost savings they create. They work for us, and it's a win-win. You know, that sounds like a no-brainer. There's two ways to reach them. You can get them at info at 180-consulting.com or visit them online at www.180-consulting.com. www.180-consulting.com. Thank you, Mike. 180-consulting.com. Hi, I'm Bernadette Page, your host of an Informed Life Radio. In an age when the term misinformation is used to silence criticism and debate about COVID-19, vaccines, and more, we're bringing you doctors, lawyers, and scientists to discuss the missing information about your health and medical freedom. An Informed Life Radio airs right here on KKNW every Friday from 3 to 5 p.m. We're starting a real health revolution, one conversation at a time. Join us. We would like to thank Podcorn for sponsoring this episode of Tech Time Radio. Explore sponsorship opportunities and start monetizing your podcast by signing up at podcorn.com forward slash podcasters. Let me tell you about Podcorn. Podcorn is an absolute must for any podcaster starting out. Now, when we started out Tech Time Radio, we started out in a back office with a couple of mics. We expanded to a studio. And then now, as you can see, we're on the radio and have distribution into other markets. Having the ability to have Podcorn at the start of our podcast would have been a dream come true. Guess what? With Podcorn... You now have the amazing opportunity for podcasts to receive sponsorship, such as host reads, interview segments, and topical discussions. With Podcorn, there's no middleman. 
Podcasters of all size can browse and choose opportunities right on their platform, set their own rates, and collaborate with brands directly without exclusivities. You never give up the rights of your podcast in Podcorn, and they're here to support you everywhere possible. Visit podcorn.com. Again, that's podcorn.com. Podcorn is a true success for those starting their podcast dreams. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio. We just had our first whiskey tasting. Mike, during the break, we got to sample our whiskey and our pick of the day. It is the Ezra Brooks Kentucky Straight Bourbon, 45% alcohol by volume. So Mm -hmm. that means 90 proof. $22.99 bottle. What do you think of this? It's really good. It's really good, isn't it? It's got, yeah. It's it's got a bite. Well, it's not not the bite, but the initial initial taste is harsh, but it smooths out. And the aftertaste is great. The aftertaste is very smooth. Yep. It has a bite, and then it kind of relaxes. So it's made of corn, rye, and barley. It was the award platinum winner of 2008 double gold winner, San Francisco World Spirits competition in 2008 gold winner. And it's caramel and vanilla with a hint of spice and chocolate for a smooth, warm finish. Yeah. All I, right. I'll put that on my bar. you put that on your bar? Yeah. yeah w- with your Legos? In your yeah. man room? Yeah, that's right. My That's right. My leg. I room. got it taken care of. All <laughs> right. Well, the next segment we're going to go to, we're really excited to get started. So let's get it there going. What's new in our gadgets and gear? All right. We got Gwen Way. Welcome to the show. We are happy to have you join us, Gwen. As much as we say that, Gwen is, again, a producer of Tech Time Radio. So we get to see Gwen every Hi, Gwen. Thursday, she knows every us every week. Every week, like so, we're excited to I, have I you. I want to come hang out in Mike's Lego and whiskey bar. By the way, I do too. Absolutely, See? that seems like a fun it, time. It sounds yeah. like a cool place. Yeah. We, we, so we, yeah, when are we right. coming over to your your man room place? As soon as, as soon as I become a billionaire, can okay, build, so can a, a, I can build a room like that. Can, so I, I got a question. We'll get can, working on that. Can we have you have a trampoline room first? So, because I know somebody by the name of Gates, but I don't want to say Bill Gates, but anybody by the name of no. Gates that has a trampoline room, so it would be I, really cool. I could do a trampoline okay. room, too. You just come down the slide, because his, his has a slide. I would I've been in the, have so, one of those, uh, yeah. Okay. You come down the slide, you go into the trampoline room, then you bounce from the trampoline room into your Lego room. What do you think about the, that? That would be a bad idea. Why was that? Have that would be never, very painful. Have you never walked on oh, I have Legos? Walked on. Okay. Oh, that would be that bad that's, idea. That would, you jump into that, yeah. and then you have some Legos on the ground, and you step on your feet. Oh, those are the, the worst. It's not things. like Scrooge McDuck Just di- bad news. diving into a pile of gold coins. It's, it's not. It hurts. All right, Gwen. Well, we're excited about this project. Let me tell you, the product that you have. I already told my wife about it because she wanted to know immediately so she could order it ahead of time if she needed to. I was so. going to say she's already ordered. So she so yeah, we see, did. So you know, <laughs> so, so you're not buying stuff now. She's buying I know. Everything. So she says, "I love having Gwen on the show. She's so much more informative than you, Nathan." I'm like, "Okay, great. Thank you very much, wife." That's, All right. So what can I say? That's right, Gwen. Thanks, so Tracy. Let, Shout and, and, out. Yeah, that's right. So let's have you, if you could, kind of tell us about your product, and then if you have some screens you can bring up about it, that would be fantastic also. Certainly, certainly. It's a product called Now Limitless Energy. Uh, And as you said, it's great for everybody from preppers to hikers to the people who just forget to charge their phones at night. Um, I know that I've fallen into that category many times in the past. I've gotten better, though, recently. Uh, We do have the wonderful screen to kind of show you the Kickstarter so that you can take a look at it yourself. Perfect. Uh, It's wonderful because it reminds me of childhood growing up in Tornado Alley. We used to have those big flashlight radio combinations that had the crank handle on them so that you didn't have to worry about changing batteries. And this is basically a crank handle for your cell phone. Okay, so I, I remember those crank ones that you used to have. You'd wind yeah, yeah. it up and it'd last about a minute and a half, right? Yep. And you'd have to wind it up again. But okay, so it's kind of the same idea that you're creating friction to generate energy. Is that kind of it? Exactly. That's exactly it. Uh, it's the, the creator actually came up with the idea last summer as he was just sitting there in the middle of the pandemic doing nothing much. Uh, and started working on it. He actually produced the first prototypes back in November okay. and handed them out to all of his friends, had them test. He says it does not charge the phone quickly. 
and it's not going to give a lasting charge. So you charge it, you're going to get five or six percent, but that's enough to get out an emergency call or check your email or whatever you need to do. Okay. And you had a chance to talk to the actual inventor of this itself. Is that correct? I, I did actually get some get a response. Uh, we had an email correspondence. Perfect. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to actually talk with him. Uh, that would have been awesome. But yeah, he's super excited. This is his second time sharing this particular project okay. on Kickstarter. Okay. Uh, the first time he actually withdrew it himself because he didn't understand how to set up a Kickstarter. Okay. Uh, he wanted to make sure that I mentioned that because apparently there have been a couple of people who are kind of questioning him on that, but he wasn't able to put together bundles or anything like that. Initially, he took that Kickstarter back open to this one and is now able to do bundles. So for example, Tracy, if you're listening, you could get one of the, the big plus sizes for Nathan because he liked the, the larger, well, Frank. because it has plus in the name, we have to get it. That's now. right. Everything is plus. Exactly. As a, exactly. A, a Tech Time Radio Plus. That's the second right. Hour. That's exactly. Right. <laughs> and, and then, Tracy, you can join me in getting the standard size, which is perfect for just throwing in a purse and being ready to go. Perfect. <clears throat> and what's the name of the product again so we can make sure we find it on Kickstarter? It's called Now, N-A-O. N-A-O. Uh, you can get, exactly. You can get one for about $41 for either the mini or the standard Okay. The plus being a plus is about forty eight dollars at this point. So it's only eight bucks more for the plus. <laughs> exactly. That's, 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 that's a, you might as well. That's like, about it, everything, it, it, isn't it? Eight bucks right. for eight a, bucks a month. Paramount <laughs> plus that's eight right. bucks a month. That's right. That's eight eight bucks, to nine. Four bucks. bucks. That's right. Okay. And, see, and this is just one eight dollar charge. So you know. And it funded in yourself. three hours. Is that correct? It funded in three hours. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So this is our gadgets and gear. Yeah, this item. Was a, this was this was a really exciting. Yeah, one. we talked. We literally at the production really show, cool we talked about this for about ten minutes, and we all yeah, kind of we looked were, at it. We were, and we're all like, oh. So, this, so again, this is something you put in your uh, keychain, you put in your purse, and when you don't have one of those chargeable units in there, because everybody normally carries that second chargeable unit because your phones die out quickly nowadays. Um, will it work or on even my when surface? that battery runs out. Yeah, so I don't think it will work <laughs> on the surface because I only think how many adapters does it have, Gwen? It's got three adapters. It's got a USB-C, so it might actually work on the service. Oh, it could work on it. It's got the USB-C, okay. the uh, micro, and then a lightning. So it'll work on for all of the Apple people out there, too. So you got your Apple, you got your Android, and you got your USB-C slash Mac yeah, slash new laptop. That's good. Too bad I don't exactly. have it today when I forgot my power supply. You did forget your power <laughs> supply today. We're going to have to switch at the second hour. Not that, out. Not, that we, not that we're going to have to do that. All right. Well, that is fantastic. Gwen, Thank you so much. I know that we are planning to have you back in our next segment because we're going to be doing something completely di different. So we're going to put you on hold here, have you exit out, and we are excited to have you back on our roundtable special that we have. We're going to have you, Nick, Mike, and I'm going to be trying to talk about some of the new aspects of uh, Mr. Biden's executive directive for cybersecurity, and that will be right up after we take our commercial break. Warning, this podcast is inappropriate, dumb, and should not be listened to. Perfect. Oral discretion is advised. Fat Tango presents a monthly scripted comedy show. Each episode is a self-contained short story that showcases the sick, twisted senses of humor of its creators. Episodes range from podcast parodies to supernatural encounters and cartoonish ridiculousness. I do this in the name of science. Jeff, which kid took the gummy bears? Can you name a famous trombone player? How do you know my name? I'm Santa. That was the best oh. I've ever seen. Thanks, bro. Every episode is a different story with different people played by different actors. Sometimes. I know I've told you this before, but I don't like you. Is this because we didn't want to get a dog? How? We got a dog. Wham! Let's get a dog. Toledo. You're disrespecting painting, you ca Can you believe he said that? No, man. Can't change my mind on this. I wish for a bigger Boy, if I was listening to this on some other podcast that was running a trailer for it, I would sure go listen to it. You know what? Split-second decision. All of it's real. Yes, I would murder Santa Claus. Check us out wherever you listen to podcasts. 
New episodes release first Monday of every month. Fat Tangle is also launching its podcast network this month. So go check it out on their website at fattangleproductions.com and follow them on social media at Fat Tangle Podcast on Twitter and at Fat Tangle Productions on Instagram. Look forward to seeing you there. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, we got a new sponsor here, and they're called The Art of Manliness. Oh, yeah? Yeah, have you heard of them? I've heard of these folks. Yeah, I've I've been on their website several times. You've been on their website? Yeah, they talk about everything, man. You know, like how to wear a porch coat with jeans, or how to give yourself a buzz cut, or uh, style tips for men. Really? Well, guess yeah. what? I have what? not heard of them until now, and now I'm excited because you know what? You're not a man. Well, I am a man. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a manly yep. man. All right, so this is really the show for manly men. Are you sick and tired of waiting through two hours of fluff in order to get a few good takeaways? Have you listened to podcasts that make you just go, huh? Tune into the Art of Manliness podcast, where you can gleam and distill the very best insights from the world's experts in self-improvement, philosophy, and practical skills history, and a lot more, and do it all under an hour. Without all the eye-rolling filler, you can walk away from every episode, Art of Manliness podcast, with actionable insights you can start implementing today to improve your life. You can listen to them on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any of your other podcast players. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio. We're sipping a little whiskey during our break. Ezra we Brooks. Had, we had our Ezra Brooks Kentucky Stray Bourbon. Now, this is a brand new idea that we got going on here. We'll see if this works. So I, did, I tried something new last week. I heard it wasn't that very successful. But <laughs> we're, you know, we're always trying to expand what we're doing. So today, we are going to move into a new segment. I have Nick Espinosa. I got Gwen Way. I got Mike Gorday here. And we are going to do our new segment, which is Tech Time Radio's Roundtable. And we're going to talk about the 30-page executive order, and I'm going to kind of lead off with some areas, and then everybody will kind of have a little bit to talk with, and kind of like ESPN's around the horn, everybody will have a little bit of time, cut you off and say, move to the next person, and we'll see how this works. So, David, let's start our segment. Welcome to Tech Time Radio's Round Table. All right, everybody, welcome. So this was a there, big... There is everybody. Uh, all right, everybody's here. Congratulations. Thank you guys for joining us. Nick, thanks for... I know I, I kind of sent you an email last minute here asking if you could join us, and I appreciate you joining us too. So glad to have you aboard. Are, do you have your uh, uh, Jack Daniels with you? Uh, no, today is Ardbeg's Wee Beastie. Okay, all right. Okay, oh. there you go. Okay, perfect. So all right. have to have some of that on the show. Um, we need to. Good stuff. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about it. A 30 page executive order was just released this Wednesday to improve the nation's cybersecurity to cover the host of cybersecurity issues. Now, I've never had an executive order come out from a presidential uh, individual in my time of knowing. And I tried to go back to research to see if anybody else did that. And they mm-hmm. didn't. They just threw these in other policies. So this is kind of a big deal. So our president said that our nation's cybersecurity needs to be taken care of. Now, I have gone through the 30-page document. I have highlights there, as you guys can see. they got tons of information. We're going to only talk on certain highlights, but ideally I'm going to kind of talk about a subject, kind of lead into it, and then see what you guys think about it. This is after this week we talked about a $5 million cybersecurity payment out from uh, Colonial Pipeworks who essentially by the time they got their restore happening, their backups already end up working. We got solar winds, we got Microsoft Exchange issues, we have personal data, we have hospitals that have been shut down just this week, and so it was nice to see that we're going to kind of take something pretty aggressive to make this. And this executive order is pretty aggressive. It has physical dates of expectations of when this is 60 days, 30 days, 90 days, 120 days, reporting to this, reporting this, pretty detailed in the report itself. So it is fantastic. And my idea, I, I, am, I am very excited about this. Okay. Because- It's about time. Yeah. It's about time that we actually had, to, had someone take this pretty serious. We're supposed to be- Why, why wasn't this taken serious before? I don't know. Okay. And, and, so, so, and so maybe oh, I, I, don't, I don't want to say that- <laughs> I, uh, I don't want to say that maybe other people didn't take it as serious, but we haven't really had an executive order to come on out saying these are some processes we're going to have in place. We're going to have people work together. So let's talk about number one. <clears throat> As we went through the 30 pages, um, very first thing that it talks is it mandates the executive branch agencies deploy multi-factor authentication, endpoint detection, 
response encryption, and zero trust. What does that mean? So zero trust. Let me kind of do this, and then we'll go to our panel here to kind of do it. So essentially, uh, multi-factor authentication is when you have on your phone. And so if you buy something from Amazon, it says, we're going to send you a a six-digit code. You have to type it in before we allow you to purchase it so it's taken care of. You can also download a Google app or a Microsoft Authenticator app. And before I log in, it will ask me to type in information. So it ensures that when I'm trying to log into something, I have to have a secondary device to approve it before I'm able to log into that device. Mm -hmm. Zero trust means that we don't have authentication at all and we don't trust you at all. And you're going to have to have an authentication process, whether it's an on person identification, a thumb identification to make sure that we don't trust you at all to take care of the items. And you have to prove you are who you are. We talked about this too, kind of the speakeasy idea that when I knock on the door, instead of just allowing the door to open, I'm going to look through that little peek hole and say, okay, guess you are the password. Yeah. What's the password, Mike? And you're going to say, blah, 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 blah. And I'll say, okay. And who are you? And Mike, and I'm going to look at you to make sure you're who you are, then close the door and move it through. So let's talk about this first. I'm going to go to Gwen first. Zero trust, multi-factor authentication, encryption. What is your response and securing cloud regarding this initiative? For customers uh, from my various MSP jobs for over a decade. So the fact that the government is just now requiring that they be implemented is somewhat startling to be honest it is it is kind of startling isn't it is, uh, so gwen's an account manager for a large msp provider so right. she does deals with this all the time yes and so this is something that we've had in the business world mm-hmm. so nick what, so we've talked about zero trust what, what do you think the, about the implications here of putting this in the government so uh, overall i mean i think don't get me wrong. I'm with you. I think this is a really good thing. Um, I think it has good cyber hygiene provisions in it, such as zero trust, multi-factor authentication. It didn't necessarily speak to an ad- advanced identity management solution with multi-factor authentication, but but this is absolutely a step in the right direction uh, here. And zero trust has basically been around since 2011. Uh, it came out of Forrester, and it's been a, a essentially a redesign of networking infrastructure to make it more secure. Basically, it's the mitigation to outbreaking things like ransom somewhere in a network where maybe you have one machine infected, but it can't spread to the other hundred or something along those lines. So, so overall, I think this is a, this is a really good thing. Uh, you know, now that said, I mean, I, I, I think there are some unfortunate sides to this, you know, this executive order as well. And, you know, I'm happy to get into that too. All right. Okay. So, oh yeah, we got, we got some, we're going to have some counterpoints. So we'll talk about a couple of points and then we'll talk about some concerns with that we have. All right. So the next thing we have here is we keep on going through. And again, there's all by section one is the policy. Section two has barriers of sharing threat information. Um, for a long time, we have had many competing organizations, including the Department of Homeland Security, National Cybersecurity Center. All these had their own processes to implement technology with this executive order is asked that all of these organizations work together so how is it that we're going to have the organizations across many different tiers probably different processes what is your take on having them all work together we'll go start with uh, nick first so I, I think it's actually rather interesting that that this has to come up and i, I think there are two things uh, here, if we're talking about this, first things first, the entire reason the Department of Homeland Security was created t- was to alleviate this exact issue. <laughs> we found out after September 11th, 2001, that intelligence wasn't being shared on things like domestic uh, potential domestic terrorist threats, uh, foreign terrorist threats, all that kind of stuff. And so now this seems to be be basically adding to that mandate, if you will, on the cybersecurity side, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But the other thing that everybody has to really understand is that the federal government is not one massive cohesive entity across the United States. It's a confederation of different departments with different mandates, different leadership, different expectations, different data and cybersecurity standards. And by virtue of that, we have had some some overall compliance standards for federal agencies. But 
one of the issues that we've had with that is that nobody has really essentially created a standard to precision uh, with that. So I'm glad that they are talking. I'm glad that they are coordinating uh, with this. That will break down the barriers to turn around potential threat intelligence in the cyber landscape much faster between these competing agencies. But at the end of the day, there's going to have to be a centralized clearinghouse that's going to ingest this information and basically push it out uh, to, to these organizations and then develop a plan for the government to actually defend itself. I would look to something like the CISA, which is the cyber security wing of the Department of Homeland Security, uh, Chris Krebs' former former job, uh, to do something along those lines. All right, so Gwen. It's a curse of silos. That's right. So speaking, yeah. of, so working at a managed service provider, which is what an MSP is, so a managed service provider is a company that provides IT services to other organizations. Um, organization and standardization is always a problem, right? So explain to me some ideas that the government here can take from our standard business practices that have been used in the last 10 to 15 years regarding cybersecurity that would be best to have this happen. Well, honestly, the first thing they need to look at are the best practices that have already been implemented in the public sector of the cloud. Most of the things that they're talking about implementing in this document have been part of the zeitgeist for, I would say, at least the last five years. Okay. We, we've got the path tracked out already. They just need to follow it and implement it properly. So so you work with across silos, Mike, in, in, in a bunch of the work that you do. How is it? How is it to get people to be organized and work together? Well, it's psychology? really difficult. We don't like to share as we're, especially when we're inclusive. We're, yep. we're inclusive by nature. Yep. Or, no, I'm sorry. We're ex exclusive by nature. We don't like to share information with other people, especially if we think it's going to give us an advantage. So this is, this is why we have to have laws created that says you will share information. That's exactly what the executive order does. And boy, let me just tell you on, on pages uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, it goes into essentially details within 30 days of completion, you will make sure that you report to the security of Homeland Security with the report that will then be reported to this group and that group and this group. So they literally, in yeah. this executive order that they have here, have to outline people working together with 60-day, 90-day, 120-day mm -hmm. deadlines. Otherwise, these people it, wouldn't work together. That's right. It's yeah. something that it, goes it, against our nature. If, and if I can, if I can, mend, I'm sorry, go, yeah, ahead, go but, ahead. Oh, no. Um, I was just going to say it's the exact same thing they did with law enforcement in the 80s and 90s. We had a major problem with departments not speaking to each other or sharing information. So we had serial killers like Ted Bundy, mm -hmm. John Wayne Gacy, etc., just going across the country killing people. All they had to do is cross state lines and they would create yeah. a lot. And they were free. Just... And not even necessarily state lines. They had to go to a different county or a yep, different, different county. And they different. were free. Yeah, that's on and my Netflix exactly streaming. I've watched problem. all those real true yeah. crime stuff. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I, I, I want to add to say that I think it's important to understand that we are talking about a specific type of intelligence sharing. We already have a lot of, in, in the cybersecurity community, we have a lot of platforms um, such as ISACs, yep. that basically intelligence sharing apparatuses for various verticals, such as healthcare, state governments, all this kind of stuff that are already sharing threat intelligence. We have groups like the Cyber Threat Alliance that are taking the threat detection companies of the world, the antivirus, the firewall makers, and allowing them to share threat in real time. So when you inoculate one, you inoculate all. This already exists. So I think it's important to understand that when the U.S. government is saying it has a mandate for 30, 60, 90, 120 days, whatever that is, it is on specific types of intelligence that are a direct threat to the United States, as opposed to, let's say, the ransomware that grandma in Idaho is going to get. And so, so by virtue of that, I think it's important that as we are tying in all of this inter intelligence sharing that we already have, that we are already working towards and col being collaborative against, I think it's important to understand the government has a different set of issues than, than the private sector does. And while we, we will see, let's say, prime contractors, the DOD, be targeted by adversarial uh, governments, 
the United States government itself is targeted 24-7, 365 by adversarial governments. And so it's a different animal in intelligence sharing. This isn't the standard, I'm going to update my virus scanner to protect against the latest strain of whatever. This is a direct and coordinated effort at information and cyber warfare against the United States. And I think that's the important thing that the Biden administration is attempting to address with this. Yeah, they're going to have to actually have meetings weekly with people across department chains that have never spoken with each other to actually work together, which is well, sad question, that you have to actually put is, it down. Why didn't they is, do that? Why is this happening now when this has been a problem for since? since I don't know, because no one decided I, to come on out with an executive order to say, hey, guys, get your act together. Yeah. And it was all kind of just done. We'll see what happens. Type. Of no, it, it's it's because honestly, it's because we are living in probably one of the most partisan times in history. We have seen multiple attempts through Congress to actually make a law on various aspects of security, election security, intrastate security, all of these things that have simply failed to pass at least one house in Congress. The only thing that I can think of in the last 10 years on an actual cybersecurity that was passed was one, a mandate to stop using Chinese-based technology, yep. and two, IOT security for the federal government, which was passed um, by Congresswoman Robbins in late December under the Trump administration. But but attempts to block these efforts have essentially required now that we skip what is a, an incredibly divided House that can't pass these things and move this to the presidential level. And so whoever is advising President Biden on this, and most presidents have excellent cybersecurity advisors around them, I know some of them, you know, this, 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 this is actually uh, something that's there. And I think that's also one of the downfalls of this as well is because we have a, a, a very healthy percentage of the population, unfortunately, that that either just hates President Biden simply because he's not on their team. He doesn't wear their jersey or, you know, for whatever reason that are going to look at this skeptically. And until we have Congress, both sides of the House basically come together and say, yes, we 100 percent agree this needs to be a law. This is going to be met with resistance, and that's one of the problems that we have here. And so it doesn't surprise me at all that we have not been able to get on the same page with this, because what ends up happening in Congress is that these bills go through, and then people tack on writers for their right. districts yep. or uh, whatever the pork it is, belly, and then know, nobody wants stuff. to pass it. Yep. It's a huge, huge problem that we have. you know. And most people are against the massive use of executive order, even when it's needed. But you know, here we are. That, right, this so, is why it's taken this long. Yep. So let's talk about supply chain risks that are going to be addressed. All right. So there's three cre three key provisions. The agencies must implement baseline security standards for software. Agencies must develop requirements for making sure vendors address security as software is developed, which should have been like step 101, as Nick was just saying. Mm -hmm. This should have been taken care of years ago. That We shouldn't have to have this in an executive order. But number three here, the government is going to create a pilot program for an Energy Star type label signifying whether software follows the new security guidelines. Now, I got some concerns about that, right? So little Energy Star thing makes no difference on if I'm going to buy a monitor or not. Now we're going to have the government that's going to come on up with a pilot program that says this software has new security guidelines that are being followed. Gwen, do you think this is going to be successful? Do you think it's not going to be successful? What advantages is this to have this new pilot program? I don't think it's going to affect us in our day-to-day -day lives at all, honestly. Uh, I think it's more for the uh, government's contractors so that they can say, look, I'm I'm using this piece of software that you've approved of. But they're honestly already doing that to a certain extent. Uh, for example, it's almost impossible to get a government contractor to use GCP. They have to use Azure because the government has already approved of Azure's security. Is this the FDA for well, so cybersecurity? Well, this is the, the platforms of, of what they say are standard platforms to do. Okay, yeah. I, to I totally get that. So, Nick, what do you think about this uh, process here of having a government pilot program to say that your software uh, has followed these guidelines? So I think it's going to be successful. And okay. the reason why it's going to be successful is essentially is going to put peer pressure on a lot of developers. And what I mean by that is if you go outside the realm of the massive, massive software developers like the Microsofts of the world, what ends up happening are these niche companies do not integrate good practices for security and change management into their organization, such as software composition analysis, software development lifecycle review, code-based analysis, all this kind of stuff simply just doesn't happen. And by virtue of that, 
as you start to to basically have these laws for compliance trickle down in the next five to 10 years, the CMMC is the one that really just kicked this off and the DOD has been taking the hits, even though it's been a disastrous rollout since January. What's going to happen is that organizations outside of the government are going to start looking at this saying, I have to buy a thousand licenses of this or 10,000 licenses of that. Am I going to go with the one that has a certified uh, you know, software designation from the government that proves it has jumped through the security and hygiene hoops it needs to do? Or am I going to go with that other party that simply hasn't done that? We are seeing this now in FedRAMP um, where cloud providers basically to cater to uh, 300, the 300,000 companies in the defense industrial base and now NASA Department Department of Treasury, Department of Homeland Security are all coming out with this standard. And so now all of the cloud service providers are spinning up basically government based clouds with much more security to meet that demand. This is fundamentally going to transform how we uh, usually address and develop software here in the United States. Okay. Quite frankly, it's a long time coming. We are years behind the other, world other when places. it comes to privacy and security. All right. 30 second question. The executive order calls for an establishment of a cyber incident review board in 30 seconds. Do you think that's going to be successful and what advantages does that give? I'm going to start with Nick first. Yes. Um, part of going through any kind of cyber incident is making sure that you are running a gap analysis and improvement plan as part of a greater contingency plan for the organization. So having an overview board that has its hands into basically all the government agencies, understanding these incidents and coordinating that action is a very good thing. OK, I'll go to go ahead next. Agreed. It's going to be great. It's also going to dig at least partially into RCA so they're able to actually find what gap, you know, the, the hacker or the bad actor wiggled into and be able to seal it. Okay. Mike, closing it is going to be okay on the psychology of people to have a well, it's review gonna, board? It's going to really come down to the effectiveness of the, of the group and their internal dynamics. Okay. So whether or not they're able to collaborate together, collaborate together and whether or not they're able to be accepted by the outside sources. All right. Okay, guys, thank you very much for joining our first roundtable ever. This was exciting. Thank you so thank much, you. Nick, Gwen, everybody. We're going to head out to a commercial break. And when we come on back, we got Mike's mesmerizing moment. And stay tuned. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, have you been looking for new podcasts to listen to lately? Yeah, I'm always looking for something to listen to. All right, I got one for you. It's called the Hypocritical AF Podcast. It's a weekly audio and video show hosted by Albert Figueroa. Ah, oh, that's where the AF comes from. Yeah, so you were probably thinking of something else, didn't you? I thought it was hypocritical. F no, no, no. Tune in every week for random conversations, random rants, and a wide variety of interviews where the conversations range from hysterical to hypocritical. Hypocritical. The hypocritical AF podcast is unfiltered, on the edge, and 100% organically built from the ground up. Okay, this sounds this sounds a lot more fun. New episodes drop every Wednesday on all streaming platforms and on YouTube. Yeah, where can I find that? Oh, you can also find them online at www that hypocritical af.com but mostly take a look at them on instagram you can find them at hypocritical af podcast check out hypocritical af podcast today awesome hey mike yeah what's going on hey have you heard of work patterns you mean like how my virtual work pattern doesn't involve pants no our listeners don't want to hear about those work patterns work patterns is a people management app i signed up for recently and my team is loving it everyone who manages people knows that being a great manager has never been hard work patterns arms managers with tools they need to be effective leaders no matter where people are physically located nice will it help me actually feel prepared for the tons of one-on-one -on -one and team meetings i have every week yep work patterns is designed to make team management easier, enabling continuous one-on-one -on -one feedback, collaborative meetings, goal tracking, and workflow management all in one place. My team has also been publicly sharing wins in apps like Slack and Team using Work Patterns Kudos feature. Celebrating wins of all sizes has been great for morale. Honestly, whether you're a manager struggling to stay on top of things or a CEO whose organization has outgrown its system, Work Patterns will help reduce the chaos of your workday. Hey, that's great. Time is valuable and I want to make sure my team is having productive meetings. Exactly, Mike. You should sign up. They're offering a free trial. Wow. I'm going to sign up right now. Where do I go to do that? It's at workpatterns.com. Check out workpatterns.com using the link in our show notes and get the people management at love by thousands of highly performing teams. 
This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. This is very reflective. You know, we're talking about why now. It's very reflective of just normal human behavior where we won't move until we experience enough pain to do so. That makes sense. You know, because we, we all have this pain threshold. We don't, we don't like to do anything until that threshold is met. And then once that threshold is met, then we will move. That makes sense. All right, Mike, we got to get to our uh, pick of the day. Ezra Brooks, Kentucky Stray Bourbon, thumbs up or thumbs I'm down? I'm going to give it a thumbs up. I I'm going to give it a thumbs up also. Fantastic deal. All right, so we have our NFT. Do you want to put it on up there? Because on our next hour coming on up, we got um, our stories of letters segment. We got stories you didn't know about Amazon's Jeff Bezos. We got Mark Kaplan joining us with an interview, the founder of the media platform Checkmark. I do believe that it could be as powerful as Facebook in the upcoming years here. So, of course, welcome to our first hour of Tech Time Radio. We got our second hour just after this. If you're not seeing it, make sure you go to techtimeradio.com to see the second hour. I'm Nathan. We got Mike Gorday here, David Brown behind the board. Bye bye. That's my line. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube. So check us out on youtube.com slash tech time radio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at tech time radio, remember mum's the word, have a safe and fantastic week.